Hello everyone, uh, let me welcome you to my new group of series totally based upon the NCRTs, uh, specifically uh, of the 9th class and 10th class. Uh, I will be talking about um, the biological science portion which is very much common in our uh, UPSC examination, combined graduate level examination or in any of the examination. If you watch through my videos, it will be uh, pretty easy for you to score in the UPSC and any other examinations. Plus, it will be very much useful for the students who are in the class 9th. Uh, they will be learning a great thing from uh, uh, this video. So, let me start with the first chapter that is the fundamental unit of life. So, let me write the fundamental unit of life. So the fundamental unit of, of life of life is nothing more than it's our cell. So we will be discussing about this particular thing um, uh, from the history point of view. So we were having a scientist called as your um, Robert Hooke. So Robert uh, Hooke was the name of the scientist Robert Hooke. So what he did, he used his primitive microscope. So with the help of the primitive microscope, which was formed by him, he observed something called as your cork. Now, what do we basically mean by cork? Cork is a substance which is derived from the bark of the tree. So uh, this was a thing which was uh, examined by Robert Hooke in his primitive microscope. So he was able to figure out that there are some honeycomb-like structures in it. So these honeycomb-like structures were like little rooms. So he called them as cell. So we must know that the word cell is basically derived from our Latin language. It is derived from Latin language. And this basically means a little room. So nowadays there have been so many advancements with the use of a microscope. So let's have a discussion about the microscope also. So I will be discussing about the compound microscope now. Uh, I hope you have your uh, class 9th and CRT with you. If you guys don't have, then also I have a diagram of microscope with me. So it will be easy for you guys to figure out with the things in it. So uh, microscope, let me tell you that it's a device which is used to see the uh, microorganisms in enlarged view. So uh, let me show you the diagram of it. I hope it's pretty much clear to you guys over here. So uh, uh, let me take a pen. So the thing which you can over see over here is basically called as your eyepiece. And this eyepiece is uh, very important to look the object. Now uh, this is a tubular structure and this tubular structure is just meant to give uh, the edges like a path for the light to fall down uh, onto the object. Then we have uh, this uh, lenses. This, uh, we basically have three lenses over here and these three lenses are called as your objective lenses and these have different power in them. Either they can be 10x, it's, it can be 45x or it can be uh, any value adjustable in this particular compound microscope. So the diagram which I have is of the compound microscope. Keep this in mind that this microscope uh, cannot give you much of resolution. I know it cannot give you much greater pictures or much zooming. It cannot be given by this particular microscope. Only... Uh, about uh, not nine, more than 100 x can be given by it. So this particular area over here is basically called as your stage and the stage is having this particular uh, rectangular thing. This, this is called as your slide and uh, then we basically have the base of it and this is the mirror. So this mirror is pretty important from the point of view of physical science. So uh, this mirror is helping in the reflection of light. So the light will, light will be reflected by it in such a way that uh, it will be targeting the light onto this particular thing and below this stage will be having something called as a condenser, condenser. and this condenser will be focusing the light towards the um, this tubular structure so that we can view it. So we know the rule of the physics, the very important rule of the physics which says that we are able to see the object just because the light is falling onto the object and the object is reflecting that light and that reflected light when reaches our eyes we are able to see that particular object so this is the law of physics the similar law of physics is basically applied up here so uh, the very important thing to 
uh, like uh, not in this particular diagram is the uh, course adjustment and the fine adjustment course adjustment is just to move this particular tube up and down so that we can bring the object in a, such a position that it's pretty much pretty much clear to us so uh, there is another that is fine adjustment this fine adjustment is pretty uh, you know what to say about this fine adjustment is that we want fineness while viewing it so viewing some we are if you are viewing something under the microscope it has to be fine so uh, that fineness can be uh, controlled or it can be checked up by the fine adjustment there is one very important thing in it that is uh, you know when you use the fine adjustment up and down and up and down so this gives you exact picture you know sometimes uh, we are not able to take a thin slice if you're not able to take thin slice of an object so that is an uh, issue so uh, sometimes you get uh, you know, one side of the particular uh, viewing object another side of the object so if there is a difference in the thickening so you won't be able to figure it out so at that period of time this fine adjustment will be helping you. So uh, in this, uh, let me talk about the one of the experiment of uh, onion peel. So onion peel. This onion peel experiment is pretty important from the point of view of your biological science uh, basic. Uh, first of all, we, let me tell you the scientific name of the onion that is Alivum sepa. I hope the spelling which I am writing is right. So, Alivum Sepa is the scientific name of your onion. So, what we will be doing with the onion and what is this peel and everything. So, we will be having an onion with us. We will be peeling it off. So, we will be taking the concave structure of it and we will be breaking it. So, when we are breaking it, there will be a whitish peel like structures that has to be taken out that has to be dropped into the watch glass containing water um, and now the question arises the question is that why we are uh, keeping that uh, thin slice or the peel of the onion in the water it's pretty simple uh, the thin slice is pretty thin and so uh, we need to keep it it's, it's pretty thin so the first thing is you know it may get dried up second thing is um, it may fold up so keeping this two point in mind, so we basically uh, put that thing in uh, the wash glass containing water and it's up to us to use something called as safranin. Uh, safra, safranin. So safranin is nothing, it's a pink color stain which we basically use in the biological science laboratories. So uh, now you can dip it into dilute solution of safranin and then you can go further with your uh, experiment. Now. Uh, let me repeat it you are having a concave uh, a structure of the alivum sepa that is your onion you pay uh, like you peel it off the uh, inner uh, surface of your uh, concave side of, of concave side of your uh, alivum sepa and then you peel it off and if you peel it off or you can break it and then you can tear it in this way then you will be able to figure out that uh, there is some thin uh, whitish color um, you know a membrane that is called as a peel onion peel you will be taking that and we're putting it into your watch glass so watch glass will be having some water the water is just because for, to prevent the folding and the drying up of this particular thing then you can have another watch glass if you want and you can uh, use some stain in it that the stain which we are using here is saffron make sure that the stain which you're using is uh, uh, dilute so if you use a concentrated uh, it will be pretty difficult for you to view it properly so dilute stain will be used by you and then finally what you have to do uh, you have to take a slide rectangular slide and you have to place this specimen which is over here uh, onto the center of the slide when you're putting it on the center of slide you have to make sure that uh, it does not have an excess amount of water if it has you can clean it uh, you can absorb it up with the uh, tissue papers which you have in your laboratories and then finally you have to place a very thin cover of the glass that is called as your cover slip. So this cover slip will be preventing the contact between, uh, do you remember we were having an objective lens something like this here and we were having a stage beneath it. So this objective lens can touch the uh, like uh, the liquid substance which is placed on the slide. So 
to prevent this we have uh, the cover slip so the cover slips are very important so that our lens which is over here does not get affected by it so uh, you place the cover slip now when you are placing the cover slip you have to be very cautious you have to place it very 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 slowly and with the help of a needle you can place it suppose i'm having a syringe with me and uh, if i have to place uh, you know a needle if i have to place something uh, i will be just you know placing it very 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 much solid uh, very 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 slowly so uh, i'm not getting anything around me let me let me take a piece of paper itself so if i am placing it in it has to be very 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 slowly so that it does not have bubbles inside it so if you are it is having bubble the slide is not properly formed up so let's go further on <clears throat> uh you will be able to see some uh, you know uh, like uh, what do you say uh, group of cells which are clustered together with a thin membrane uh, thin cell wall like structures on it there will be a central structures in it uh, if i draw for you guys it will be something like this like this kind of structures you will be able to see in uh, the slide there will be so many structures like this and the very important thing in this is that there is some, something central which is basically called as your nucleus there is something called over here is your cytoplasm right and the very important thing which we need to keep this in mind that uh, the size of the cells which we are able to see in the slide is approximately same and uh, but if you look towards the lower, lower side of the upper side, if you view it from different point of views, you will be finding the difference in the cells also. So, but the basic structure is approximately same. The basic structure means there will be a central dot-like structure. There will be uh, outer coverings like structures also. Now, the very important thing from the point of view of your uh, uh, various uh, uh, examinations and like your NTSC, your C, like CBSC examinations or your SSC examination, uh, we have um, the very important thing that is the names of the various scientists. So let me talk about the very famous scientist Liu Wen Park. Now keep this in mind. The cell was discovered by Robert Hooke, but the first living cell. The first living cell was discovered by him. So he plays a very vital role in discovery of the cell. So the first living cell was discovered by Leuven Hawk. And uh, there was another scientist called as Robert Brown. Robert Brown was a scientist who discovered nucleus inside the cell. So keep this in mind that do not get yourself confused with the Robert Hooke and Robert Brown. So Robert Hooke was the one who discovered the cell. If I say correctly, a non-living cell, and Robert Brown was the one who discovered the uh, nucleus of the cell, and the Leeuwenhoek was the one who discovered the living cell. Then uh, there is another scientist called as the Purkinje. Uh, I don't know how you guys pronounce it, but I used to pronounce it as Purkinje. Purkin, K-I-N-J-E-E. Purkinje was the one who gave uh, uh, a word called as your protoplasm. Protoplasm was a word which was given by him. And you know what is protoplasm? We'll be discussing in a while. Then we were having certain other scientists also, like uh, uh, skilled in. Uh, skill. Uh, let me figure out the spelling of the skilled in. Uh, I usually get forget of the name. I don't remember the spelling of the skilled in. So I have a notes with me. Let me say C H C sorry S C H L E I D E N Skelden and Skaven were the two scientists who gave uh, something called as your uh, cell theory. Now let me talk about the cell theory a bit. The cell theory was given by Skelden and Seven. So keep this in mind that. When we are talking about the cell theory, it has certain postulates in it. The first very important postulate is that all living organisms are basically made up of cell. Uh, this was given by Skelton and Skaven as a cell theory at that particular period of time. That was a great invention, but now it is not at all a great invention because everybody knows that every living organism is basically made up of cells. So it's become a basic thing. But at that particular period of time, it was not at all basic. So let's go further on about the cell theory. 
uh, you know, cell theory was expanded by another scientist called as, this is very important, it is basically asked in the various competitive examinations also, Virchow. Virchow was the one who basically uh, gave uh, something called as Omenis cellulae e cellulae. You know, Omenis cellulae e cellulae, what does it mean? So let me write for you guys, Omenis. Omenis cellulae e cellulae. Omenis cellulae, cell e cellulae, if you want to remember it, okay. If you don't want to remember, then also okay. It basically means uh, uh, the uh, cell are derived from the pre-existing cells. So uh, this was another point which was ever added in the cell theory by another scientist called as a witch. Oh. Uh, let's go further on with uh, uh, the discovery of the electron microscope. Electron microscope is a really, really a great extra like uh, discovery in the field of biological sciences. So let's talk about the electron microscope also a bit. Electron microscope. So let's figure it out. Uh, electron microscope is a device which basically uh, uh, enlarges the view of certain uh, organelles which are there inside the cell. So it will be passing a lot of uh, your uh, uh, electron rays onto the supplement and it will be giving a very enlarged view of it. And, uh, it does, and the structures which we are able to, able to see uh, after viewing the object through the electron microscope are basically called as the ultra structure. Ultra structures. So, you will be able to see the ultra structures over here. Um, microscope, electron microscope. Electron microscope is the one which, we, which will be giving you the ultra structures. Keep this in mind that in electron microscope, the specimen can be used only once because it get vanished up, it get uh, like fired up, you know, it get destroyed up when you use the supplement uh, or the specimen inside the electron microscope. Um, there is nothing much to discuss in today's video. I hope you will be liking this video. Oh, oh my god, I forgot. Uh, we, we have discussed the protoplasm also, but um, do remind me of discussing of the protoplasm in the next uh, video because this video is getting pretty, you know, longer up. So let's hold on. Uh, we'll be discussing it. So let me revise you the names once again. Do you want me to revise? I feel you will be. Uh, so there was a scientist called the Robert Hooke who discovered the cell. The Robert Brown was the one who discovered the nucleus. Then there was uh, uh, the Perkinji who gave the term, in, uh, term protoplasm. We will discuss what is protoplasm in the next class. Don't take attention about it. Uh, you know, then there was uh, Skeldin and Skeven who gave the cell theory, and the final uh, Wilshaw who gave um, uh, a point into the cell theory that the cell, uh, the living cells, arises from the pre-existing pre-existing cells. So this was all about your, okay, we forgot about the Leeuwenhoek. Uh, his full name was Anton van Leeuwenhoek. So he discovered the first living cell uh, from the pound water. So that's all for today's uh, video. We'll discuss the next video soon. Bye-bye. Ah,